another playoff squad, Bemidji State, the Beavers. They've had three tri uh, straight trips, excuse me, to the second round, not just the playoffs, but to the second round of the NCAA playoffs. Michigan Tech, the Huskies, are traveling down to take on the Beavers. Tech finished a meager 5-5 five and five last year in the GLIAC Beavers, 9-3 and three in the NSIC. Tech does lead the all-time series 10-5. The last game played between these two squads, 1992. The first of which, 1956. I, for one, did not realize this is a game and a contest and a battle that goes back and dates back that long. There hasn't been a game in, let's see, 12, 30-some years. Quick math. That's awesome. What are the cliff notes for this one? For Michigan Tech, obviously, uh, Metlack and kind of the other uh, quote-unquote new additions of the coaching staff cementing themselves up there for the Huskies. But I think the biggest one for the Huskies when it comes to their offense in particular, Darius Willis. He's back for MTU, the former first-team all-Gleak wide receiver. He went to UAB for 2023. He's returned to the Huskies. Talk about the Gleak and bring it back to these D1 guys. Talked about Connor Muir earlier and now uh, D. Will, Darius Willis up there. In 2022, he led the Gleak in receiving touchdowns and yards. He's an honorable mention All-American, a first-team all-Gleak wide receiver selection. That's a big-time piece for them. Freeze looks to be the one under center for them, Alex Freeze, who's gotten some experience, um, but now will really be his time to uh, to come out. And obviously last year uh, you know, broke out and had some some big games, but now this is really time to, to take control of this offense, and we'll see what that Michigan Tech offense does. The defense we know for Michigan Tech is going to fly around and keep them in a lot of games, very similarly to Bemidji State, who might have not had an explosive offense for uh, a bit of the season. But uh, that offense for, for Michigan Tech might be a question mark, Getting a big-time playmaker like Darius Willis uh, back on that side is huge. They've got some other contributors on the outside there that I know they're really excited about and, and a squad that really has a lot of upside uh, over there in the GLIAC. But Midgey, they scrimmaged Duluth this spring, which is interesting to me. And um, we talk about a rule in NCAA D2, at least, that hadn't been implemented prior, very similar to the Week 0 concept. The scrimmaging in the spring, other than like a COVID couple of deals that went on, that wasn't really a thing right before and now not only are you able to scrimmage in the spring but they will be able to do it against a really talented in-conference foe for Bemidji State a team that is picked to win the conference in Duluth that was a great test for them in the spring and a couple new faces on the offensive coaching staff they got a new coach at the offensive line position and wide receiver group for the Beavers but like I said three trips to the second round of the NCAA playoffs don't count out the Beavs at home. This one is going to be really exciting. I think that comes down to uh, the fourth quarter there for either of those squads. I expect the over-under, I mean, I'm putting at like 38, I think. And that might be, at my age, like milk, over-under, let's say 38 and a half. Let's say 38 and a half for over-under. Lock it in right now. Um, I don't sports bet. Disclaimer. Disclaimer.